Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be checking out an ultra small Windows 11 PC powered by an Intel Jasper Lake CPU. This is known as the Nook Box 5. And in the past, we took a look at the original Nook Box. It was powered by a Gemini Lake Intel CPU. But this one definitely has a bit of an upgrade, especially on the GPU side of things. And it's still ultra small. I mean, this thing is absolutely tiny. It is actively cooled, so there is a fan in here. It does 4K with dual full-size HDMI outputs. And overall, I mean, it's definitely one of the smallest Windows 11 PCs that I've ever taken a look at on the channel. Hopefully we get some decent performance out of it. But in this video, we're going to do an overview, check out the specs. We're going to test out some performance like 4K video playback, run some benchmarks, test out some PC games and some emulation on the new Nook Box 5. So inside of the box, basically the only thing you're going to get is a user manual. You'll get the mini PC itself and a 12 volt, 3 amp USB type C power supply. Taking a look at the I.O., up front here we have two full-size USB 3.2 ports. Moving over to the right-hand side, micro SD card slot. Not much going on over here on this side, but when we move around back, you'll see we have that USB Type-C port, and unfortunately this only works for powering the unit up. We've also got a 3.5mm audio jack, gigabit Ethernet, another USB 3.2 port, and dual full-size HDMI out. Now, when it comes to storage, the one that I have here is the 256 gigabyte model, but it is fully upgradable from this M.2 on the bottom here. They also sell a 512 on Amazon if you're interested in getting a little more storage out of the box. Taking a look at the specs of the Nook Box 5, for the CPU we have the Intel N5105. This is a Jasper Lake CPU with four cores, base clock of 2 GHz, and a turbo clock up to 2.9. As for the built-in graphics, these are much better than the older Gemini Lake CPUs, because with this one here, we actually have 24 execution units instead of 16, and sometimes even lower with those Gemini Lake CPUs, but it's an Intel UHD up to 800 megahertz. Eight gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM running at 2,933 megahertz. This one here has a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. It also has Wi-Fi 6 built-in and Bluetooth 5.2, and it comes with Windows 11 pre-installed. All right, so I've got everything set up here. We're gonna be testing out a bunch of stuff in this video, but uh, first things first, as you can see, this thing is absolutely tiny, not much bigger than my mouse itself. And I gotta say, this is way snappier than I thought it would be. The CPU we have in here isn't a top of the line Intel CPU, but for web browsing, email checking, video playback, works out just fine. So one thing that I noticed here is they're actually running this RAM at 2,933 megahertz. In the past with the older Gemini Lakes, it was only at 2,400 megahertz. And this is in dual channel. I've checked through hardware info. So it will help out with GPU performance, and on top of the new UHD Intel GPU they have in here with those 24 execution units, it's not a bad little light gamer either. Wi-Fi 6 connected right up to my Wi-Fi 6 router, no problem with web browsing, everything's really quick here, just went right to the GMK Tech website. So yeah, I mean, you want to do some email checking, web browsing, some document editing on a little PC like this, you shouldn't have any issues. And the TDP on this out of the box is set at 13 watts. It doesn't pull more than 18 from the wall with everything going at full bow. And when I do 4K video playback tests with these mini PCs, I always like to turn scaling completely off with Windows. That way our viewpoint on the video itself is truly 4K. So this is a 4K 60 HDR video from YouTube. I've got stats for nerds on, and I know it's a bit hard to see. We'll move in a bit closer. But by the end of this video here, I only had 13 drop frames and eight of them came from the initial load in. So 4K 60 from YouTube or your favorite app is totally possible on the Nook Box 5. And just to give you a look up here, our viewpoint is at 4K. We've got 11 drop frames so far out of 3,500. And by the end, we only had 13. So we're good to go there. Next thing I did was run a couple benchmarks. First one is Geekbench 5, and to tell you the truth, I thought we'd get a better single core. We're only at 483, multi sitting at 1902. Moving over to 3D Mark Wildlife, this is a GPU Vulcan benchmark. Total score, 2,396. And finally, Night Raid with a 3,252. So yeah, I mean, these scores are definitely low, but we are working with low-end hardware. I thought it'd come out a little higher on each one of these, given the performance that I'm getting. But these are benchmarks, and now I want to move over to some gaming and see what it can do. Here's the Windows Store version of Minecraft. We're at 60, 
I've set it up for 13 chunks. We do have fancy graphics on and something like Minecraft is able to run like this at 60 all day. Plus we have active cooling. So we never thermal throttled this little CPU. I was surprised to see that. This thing handles Skyrim quite well. We're only at 720p, low settings, but with the older Gemini Lake Celerons, I was never able to get this kind of performance. We do see a couple dips down to 59, but if that FPS counter wasn't on, I would have never noticed it. And next up, we have Left 4 Dead 2, 720p, low, and going into this, I really didn't expect it to run it as well as it did, just like Skyrim, but uh, we're getting an average of 98 FPS. I could probably take this up to 900p or maybe even medium settings at 720p and be just fine with it. I know these are older games that I'm testing, but this is a very low-end CPU with integrated graphics. It's not going to do AAA games very well, but I did test at least one newer game, The Art of Rally. One of my favorite little racing games, I've been having a great time with it. At 720p low, we can get over 60 with it. We actually had an average of 64 FPS out of this. So the new UHD graphics they're using in their low-end chips definitely have a big upgrade over the older Gemini Lake, and it really comes down to this having 24 EUs or 24 execution units versus 16 and sometimes even lower for older Gemini Lake CPUs. Now it's time to check out some emulation, and I actually had a good feeling we'd be able to do the lower end stuff really well. Here's Dreamcast using ReDream. I'm at 1280 by 960, and I could probably take it up a bit. I mean, we're not stressing that CPU out too much. Getting close to 20% on the CPU and around 25 on the GPU, so we do have a little more room when it comes to Dreamcast. But I did want to test something a little harder to run, so we're going to move over to PSP. And even with something like Chains of Olympus, with that Vulcan back in at 2x resolution, we're getting really great performance. I also tested OpenGL, and I did have more hiccups, so I just swapped it back over to Vulcan, but these little chips are actually turning out to be really nice for emulation. At least the lower end stuff. Now, there's no way that this is going to do PS3, but I did want to throw some GameCube at it using the Dolphin emulator. Because in the past, on the older lower end Gemini Lake CPUs, it actually performed pretty decently. But, you know, there were some games that struggled. But with this one here, we're able to do Auto Modalista here at the native resolution with that Vulcan back end at a constant 60. Not bad at all. I mean, we definitely have more power than a Raspberry Pi, but these are coming in a bit more expensive. If you're interested in seeing like a full video with this thing running something like Bado Serra or even RetroPie, let me know in the comments below. And before we wrap this up, I did want to take a look at a little bit of cloud gaming. I'm using xCloud here, just right in the Edge browser. We've got Clarity Boost enabled. And I'm on Wi-Fi, and with Wi-Fi 6, it's actually really good. But when it comes down to cloud gaming, you probably just want to plug into Ethernet. That's going to give you the best performance that you can get or the best experience that you can get out of cloud gaming. But when it comes to these little mini PCs, since we don't have enough power to push AAA games, you know, natively, you can always stream them. GeForce Now, Stadia, and xCloud. When it comes to measuring power consumption from these mini PCs, I always plug these into a kilowatt meter, and at idle, this thing only pulls 6 watts. While gaming, we average 15, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the GPU and the CPU was 18 watts. So we have a relatively low power draw mini PC here also. So yeah, it's actually a decent little mini PC. It's an upgrade from the original Nook Box or the Nook Box S and even the Chewy Lark Box. We have that new Jasper Lake CPU in here with those 24 execution units on the GPU, which really does help out, as you saw with Skyrim and Left 4 Dead. And when it comes to upscaling emulators, this will definitely outperform Gemini Lake when it comes to that new GPU. So, I mean, this is actually a pretty cool little unit. So if you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one up, I will leave a couple links in the description. You can pick these up with 256 gigabytes of storage or 512, but remember, you can always upgrade that SSD later on down the road if you need to. I think these little chips here are going to be excellent for little emulation setups, and if you're interested in seeing something like Bado Sierra running on this, just a dedicated emulation front end, let me know in the comments below and I can get a video like that made. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.